So welcome to another book talk under my favorites, and when I say my favorites, I truly mean books that I have enjoyed reading that weren't initially part of my list of books to read under the different categories and subgenres that I've created. So I ended up just creating an entire list called my favorites, uh, which hey, happens. So um, this particular video is on two books. They are a duology series. They go together. Um, they're relatively new, and they are both by Peter O'Gilligan. The first one is called The Call. The second one that just came out about a year ago is The Invasions. I ended up reading them not because they were on my list initially, but Dr. Young had this really cool thing in class where we could kind of, he would have all of these YA novels laid out on a table, and so then we could just go up, we could find one that looked interesting, we could pick it up, we could take it home, we could read it, and then bring it back the next week. So when I was browsing the shelf, like I already owned uh, a good number of the books that he had available to us, and I saw this one, and honestly nothing about the way that it looks looks like something I would want to read. I mean, it's interesting, it's kind of got this weird like Stephen King kind of vibe to it. Um, but it wasn't particularly, like, nothing jumped out about it. Even the back of it, which I will read to you, says, Three minutes. You wake up alone in a horrible land. A horn sounds. The call has begun. Two minutes. The sit here are close. They're the most beautiful and terrible people you'll ever meet. And they've seen you. One minute. Nessa will be called soon. No one thinks she has any chance to survive, but she's determined to prove them up. Prove them wrong. Time's up. Could you survive the call? And so... Within this book, the entire concept is that you're called. It actually takes place in Ireland. Um, the entire thing, I think, can be probably researched to talk about a lot of lore within the Irish culture. The idea of the Sidhi being almost like fairies kind of comes up later in the book, as well as the history of Ireland. And so we meet this character, Nessa. Uh, her name is Vanessa. And she actually had polio as a child. And so uh, Nessa is our main character. She's our protagonist. The thing that I love about this book is that she does have this handicap, but she doesn't let it take over her life. She believes that she has just as much right to survive as anybody else. And so I think one of the big themes of this book is Charles Darwin's entire idea of naturalism, the idea that we are a product of our environment and that we are also capable of surviving. And typically it's survival of the fittest. So within that, Nessa and teenagers in her age group they go off to survival school, basically, um, so that they can survive the Sidhi, who are these fairies that can, you know, call you at any time to go into their world. And you have to basically survive 24 hours of their time, which equates to three minutes of, you know, real lifetime. It's this really cool thing with worlds kind of combining and colliding and getting closer together. The Invasion, which is the second book, gets way more into a historical aspect of it. Uh, it gives some research, some background of Irish lore, I think is really cool. I think it could make for a really great inquiry project for students. The thing that kind of brought me to this when I was saying it earlier, um, Dr. Young had all these books out on the table and I saw this one. I didn't exactly want to pick it up. It doesn't really look something like I would like. Um, and he saw me looking at it and he just kind of looks at me and he goes, that's the most terrifying book I've ever read in my entire life. And I love thriller books, I love mystery, I love murder mystery books, I love true crime, like those kind of books interest me a lot. And so I just kind of looked at it and it was like, okay, well, challenge accepted. Um, I'm going to take it home and I'll let you know how I think about it. I ended up reading The Call in about a day and a half. I started it Friday after school. Actually, I started it Thursday after class. Um, that Friday, I was so immersed in this book that I told all of my students that we were just going to have like a freebie read day um, so that I could keep reading it at work and then I could read it after school too. So, I mean, hey, they went for it. I loved it. I think it should be made into, a, if not anything, a graphic novel, but I think making it into a film. If there was a list of books that I truly felt deserved to have a film created out of them, The Call and The Invasion, top of my list by by all means um, I think they are so creative and imaginative and as Dr. Young stated um, it is pretty terrifying what happens to some of these characters each chapter is kind of if it's not told from Nessa's perspective it is told from one of the other students at the school who is called uh, you don't know when you're gonna get called you don't know if you're gonna get called you just kind of know that it, it could happen to you at any point you could end up surviving the cult or you could be hideously destroyed and dismembered and you know created into some horrible beast that's sent back to the world you came from and so there's a lot of descriptive imagery in this book about what kind of creatures and dismemberments happen um 
I think the more terrifying aspect is that it's this anticipation waiting game. So you train and you train and you train your entire life to out, you know, outlive and survive the call. But at the end of the day, you really don't know if it's going to happen. Um, one of the things I love about Nessa is it's not her strength that keeps her alive. Um, spoiler alert, she doesn't die. She uses her brains and it, it becomes this very like Odysseus, uh, the Odyssey kind of thing where it, it's not about your just strength, it's about your mental agility and it's about coming up with a clever idea, short notice, like being able to think on the spot, being able to outwit people who think that they're smarter than you. And so Nessa does this and her... Her key to survival, her survival of the fittest at a point where people don't believe she could possibly survive because she requires crutches and she seems weak, um, for her to outlive people and to survive this thing that the entire country of Ireland is plagued by um, is pretty phenomenal and you're rooting for her the entire time. So in the invasion, uh, like I said earlier, the invasion is very well written. It's, um, it is newer. I think that the historical concept of it, I think it would have made maybe a better prequel book to have like some history, and then the invasion kind of is focused way more on the city where the call is focused on the students. So that by the time you get to the invasion, you're actually, um, you're almost rooting for them as well. It's this weird psychoanalysis, you know, it plays with your mind a little bit because you kind of wonder, do the people in Ireland deserve this fate? Do they deserve being called? Do they deserve their entire population being wiped out? Like, what's happening here? Because you realize there's some empathy within the book and the way that it's written where you you do understand where they're coming from. The city are invading for a reason. They, they want justice. They want equality. They want all of these things that have been taken from them from colonization. And so it really puts you into perspective. I think this combined with the nonfiction book that we read in class, the Indigenous People's History of the United States, it's a far reach and it's a far connection. I get that. But, you know, you get this idea of there's a one side point to history that's been made. There's one side of history that's usually told more than than others. And this particular story does give the other side of maybe colonization that's happened in Ireland from other parts of Europe. And it adds a little nonfiction. It adds a little lore. But at the end of the day, I think the horror and the, you know, terrible parts of this book the parts that I find super interesting because they're really gory, um, do have some nonfiction aspects to them. I think you really could pull some research into that and make it interesting. But uh, Peter O'Gilligan, he's amazing and he's wonderful. I wish this book showed up more in schools. It's one of my favorites. It kept me captivated each and every time that I read it. I think that's one of the telling things about a book is if I'm willing to quite literally stop teaching for a day and have everybody read just so I can finish a book, um, shouldn't do that as a teacher. But at at the same time, I feel like if they see me loving something, uh, I got 10 kids to read it because I was so obsessed with it for about a week.